Good morning. I'm Tom Conkle, a cybersecurity engineer with Optic Cyber Solutions. Optic Cyber Solutions is a registered practitioner organization or an RPO within the CMMC ecosystem. As such, we help organizations uh, prepare for and uh, CMMC assessments, and we wanted today to continue our conversation on the uh, maturity level one practices within CMMC. So again, I have Mike Green, a cybersecurity engineer from Optic joining us once again. So welcome, Mike. Thanks, Tom. Excellent. And we're gonna continue our conversation today with the boundary protections practice. This practice specifically states to monitor, control, and protect organizational communications at the external boundaries and key internal boundaries of the information systems. So this is a rather long one, Fred. I'm like, uh, what does this practice mean to us? <clears throat> Essentially, you're, um, you know what's coming and going into, into and outside of your boundary. So essentially, you need to define what you have your system boundary defined. <clears throat> um, essentially, things like firewalls, web proxies, the kind of monitor, control, restrict the traffic that goes into the systems, uh, into the system, out, to, out of the system for external. And then key internal boundaries, if they exist, could also be things like DMZ or segmentation within the network, essentially keeping you know data flows segmented as appropriate. Excellent. So yeah, making sure that we have it defined and we know where those segmentations are. So as you work with organizations and help them to implement this this practice specifically, what are the things that you keep uh, help them consider or you help them put in place? Sure. Well, we always want to start with uh, data flow diagrams are really good. Kind of understand where what data is coming into the system, where it's going, and then have the appropriate restrictions. So those could be ACLs for firewalls. Make sure you're restricting uh, data flows that shouldn't be leaving the um, organization or coming into <clears throat> the organization for internal, um, which is really key internal boundaries. You may have you know separation from different environments that may live in the same system or the same network, but they're segmented due to um, organizational rules or, you know, data flows, different types of businesses, things like that. Um, so it's a lot of things to consider. Um, data flow is number one. And once you understand that, you can kind of build in the appropriate uh, protections, whether it's internal, external uh, for the data flows. Okay. So for smaller organizations, how do you see them defining their, their boundaries and understanding where the data is so that they know where, where to implement this practice? Yeah, for uh, smaller businesses, they likely may not have a lot of internal uh, segmentation, so it's probably more just the external side, would probably be your firewall, web proxy, things like that. Internal, uh, typically smaller organizations will probably have more of a flat network, so everything may be the considered the boundary as far as the system goes or network, so it may not be um, segmentation, but ultimately it does come back to the, um, the data that we're trying to protect, <clears throat> um, you know, the sense of data, whether it's FCI or CUI. Uh, really where it flows, um, but typically we see the small organizations kind of scope it uh, so you wouldn't actually have an internal separation. It's more just the external protections. Internal piece. So we can meet the internal piece, but if we have a flat, smaller network that we just don't have those internal boundaries. Right, yeah, you kind of meet it by default. They don't exist. Yeah, it's, right. it's kind of kind of what it is. Exactly. So as you work with organizations, I, I guess, where do, where do they really focus or where do you find them struggling the most part with implementing this practice or what are the key things that they, where they need you know, to spend their time appropriately as they're getting implemented? Yeah, in a lot of cases, it's kind of tuning, um, kind of having that base work, uh, baseline network um, flow understanding. Um, in a lot of cases, they kind of know the, the data flows. In some cases, they don't. So some, it's a lot of time, it's the tuning of, you know, what data is actually flowing. And then actually, as part of this process, you also want to make sure you're monitoring those communications. So you want to actually have things like a, a SIM <clears throat> to actually know, you know what's going across the network, um, any, any type of flags, audits, audit records for any data that may be leaving that you wouldn't expect to leave or any you know, new communication. So you want to kind of, uh, I guess tuning is a big part of it um, in helping to understand those data flows. Uh, make sure you're appropriately understanding what's coming into your system, what's leaving the system. Um, and there, there are no um, deviations from what you expect. Right, exactly. So yeah, as you mentioned, the, the key tuning part, because yeah, just putting a firewall on the external boundary uh, isn't appropriate if we don't lock it down appropriately, <laughs> you know, to, to yeah. only allow that data that yeah. we want in and out of our <clears throat> FCI environment uh, to appropriately flow. So again, you know, it sounds like with many of the other practices, you know, we need to look at from the business side, what are those, the data that we're trying to, uh, that needs to come in the environment or leave the environment mm -hmm. so that we can do that tuning appropriately to put the protections in place. And then again, like you mentioned, with the, the monitoring aspect, making sure that we have identified what we know what is normal look like as it's flowing through those boundary devices right. so that abnormal data can quickly be identified. So. That's right. Yeah. And for the abnormal, um, you want to do, you know, maybe like a, a digest from the firewall or automated alerts, things like that to kind of notify you of any key, you know, deviations on the baseline. So. 
and understanding. So excellent. Well, thank you, Mike. I appreciate you for joining us again and sharing your expertise. So, and then as always, if you have any questions on this practice or any other practices, feel free to reach out to Optic Cyber Solutions at info at opticcyber.com or in the links below. Thank you. Thanks for joining me today as we walk through the CMMC Maturity Level 1 practices. As always, please feel free to reach out if you have any questions or you'd like assistance in implementing the CMMC practices. We'd love to help you in your CMMC journey. So feel free to reach at info at opticcyber.com and thanks for watching.